Here's the GeoGebra applet with the bacteria growth data from the web page. I'll demonstrate how to use the applet to fit the old exponential growth model to the data. But first, let me enter some bogus data in here so I don't spoil the fun by showing you what the real data does. Here I made the population size start at 0.1 and increase by 0.05 in every time step. This fake data isn't going to fit any of our models, but we'll use it to illustrate the techniques. If the bacteria were exhibiting exponential growth, then we know that the change in any time step will be proportional to the population size at the beginning of the time step. This means if we plot change versus population size, the points should lie along a line through the origin. I'll show how you can use GeoGebra to make a plot of change versus population size. Let's create a new column here. We'll call it change. The change in the first time step should be the difference between the population size at time step 1 and time step 0. To use GeoGebra to calculate this change, I can type an equal sign here in cell D2. Click on cell C3, which is the population size after time step 1. Type a minus sign. Click on cell C2, which is the population size at time step 0, and press Enter it automatically calculated that the change was 0 0.05. Then we can copy the formula that we put in this cell to the rest of the column and GeoGebra will calculate all the changes for us. So we click here, we can press Control C to copy, highlight the rest of the column and hit Control V and we can see in this case the change was always 0 0.05 because I don't have real data here. Notice I didn't copy to the end of the column. If I had, if I hit Control V here, you'll notice you'll get a negative number here because it automatically puts in zero for the next time step. And so the change here would be negative 0.6. Well, that negative number is going to mess us up, so I'll be sure to delete that. I'll delete this zero here too. What we want to do is plot change versus population size. Here's a nifty way we can do this in GeoGebra. Let's give ourselves a little more room. In GeoGebra, if I enter an ordered pair in the spreadsheet, it'll automatically plot it in the graph at the left. I want to create an ordered pair, x, y, where x is the population size and y is the change. So to do that, I can type equal, open parentheses, and then click on C2, which is the population size. This is what I want for my x component. Type a comma click on what I want for my Y component, which is D2. I don't even need to type the closed parentheses. GeoGebra does it for me, and I can press Enter. And now I get the point 0 0.1, 0 0.05, which GeoGebra plots for me right here. I can copy this to the rest of the column by clicking Control C, highlighting the rest of the column, and pressing Control V. And now we can see it plotted change versus population size right here. It also labels them with E2 through E11, the address of these cells in the spreadsheet. If you want to get rid of those, you can highlight these points, right-click it, click on Show Label to turn it off, and there you can see the points. You could also highlight the points over here and do the same thing. If you want to make it fancier, you can right-click any of the points, either in the spreadsheet or in the graphics window, Go to Object Properties, and you can change the color if you like, or the style of the points. If the data were exhibiting exponential growth, we'd expect these points to lie in a line through the origin. Doesn't look good for this case, but that makes sense because it's just growing steadily here. For the real bacteria growth, you should see that it does lie in a line for a while, but then it comes back down. As the growth rate should slow down as the bacteria population size gets larger and it starts to exhaust its environment.